Um, I'm Regina and I work for the Irish Wildlife Trust as a project officer specifically on marine protected areas. So um, we've been having these town hall meetings really because as Porik said, this report is currently in circulation, uh, open for public consultation um, and everybody should really get involved. It is huge and that's why we're having these town hall meetings to kind of try and break it down a bit. It's over 300 pages long, but it has some really, really good stuff in it. And the reason why this report exists is because um, Ireland, the government really, committed to designating at least 30% of Irish waters as marine protected areas by 2030. And as you can see on this map, um, these areas in yellow are the, the protected areas we have at the moment. They cover about 2.1% of the Irish marine region. So we're talking a huge, huge scale up of protection. Um, now the report really gives recommendations to the government on, on how this can be achieved. So then the really next steps, kind of the legislation that's needed, um, the, the public participation aspects. So it doesn't really give any indication of where new marine protected areas might go. Uh, so that's all kind of up to us now and up to the government. And also the ambition of how highly these areas are gonna be protected, that's all still open. So that's why people are really have to be um, as engaged as possible and to, to move this process along, along and make sure that we get highly protected areas that actually will make a difference. So for those of you that don't know a whole lot about marine protected areas, the report provides a definition. Um, it's quite a standard definition. It's generally a marine protected area is like a national park, but in the sea. So any area that's geographically defined in the sea that's designated for the protection or restoration of nature. And if these areas are well managed, which at the moment, unfortunately, we're not seeing, but if they were well managed, then there are multiple benefits from marine protected areas because um, if you leave an area just um, to its own devices, if you allow the ecosystem to recover, um, you will have um, fish populations um, improving, you'll have carbon stored in those areas and lots of other benefits. So it really is, is good news. These 30% or at least 30% highly protected areas, if we get them, would be absolutely transformative for the Irish uh, seas. So really what I'm gonna to talk to you about is just some of the key aspects. I won't be able to talk about everything that's in the report, of course, but some of the main recommendations are good. And I think they, they deserve um, to be broken down a little bit so that people can you know, participate in the public consultation and, and really highlight that these are good recommendations. And one of them is, for example, that um, the government should set up this new MPA coordinating body. So it would essentially be a new body at government level that would sit in one of the departments that wh whose sole purpose is to um, oversee the designation and management of marine protected areas and kind of coordinate marine conservation across government. Because what we have right now is the, the silos at government level. We have the Department of Agriculture, Food at the Marine, whose main objective really is to increase economic output from the sea. And we have the Department of Housing, which now also has the Department of Heritage within it. And their kind of main objective is to, to implement the Marine Strategy Framework Directive, which is, has the main goal of um, getting good environmental status in Irish waters. Uh, the, the Department of Housing also now is responsible for designation and management of marine protected areas, marine spatial planning. So a whole range of things that are really about conservation. And, you know, of course, there's a Department of um, Environment as well. And so how, how do all of these departments actually collaborate or even communicate? So having a new MPA coordinating body would actually be really helpful. Um, then the report recommends that Ireland should implement this systematic conservation planning approach. Again, really great idea just to have a system in place from, from the planning to site selection to implementation and then crucially that monitoring and review of MPA success to have all those stages very clearly laid out and built within that also the structures for people to get involved. So that's all things that we just don't have right now. Then the report recommends a new primary legislation. And I'm gonna go more into why we need that later. One of the reasons though, is that we right now actually don't have a legal definition of a marine protected area in Irish law. 
So it'd be quite important to have that. And then last but not least, the report recommends that we need proper resources. And that's not just in terms of um, money, but actual staff on the ground. We'll need the equivalent of a national park ranger for each marine protected area to really look after it, uh, engage the public uh, and, and you know, monitor and enforce. So some really great recommendations that if these were implemented, it'd be a really good start. So the reason why we need new MPA legislation is because the areas that we have right now are so-called marine um, special areas of conservation and special protection areas. And they were designated under EU habitats and birds directives. And the problem with the habitats directive is that it was it's set up in a way that you have a list of uh, habitats and species for which the sites should be designated. And that list is quite limited, especially when it comes to the marine areas. For the terrestrial sites, for land areas, we have over 200 habitat types that should be designated as protected areas. Whereas in the marine, we only have about seven habitats. So it's, it's really limited when it comes to the marine. Uh, examples of those habitats uh, right now are reefs, and that's one habitat that we can designate in the inshore and offshore areas. But many of the other habitat types are really shallow inshore areas only. And that includes large shallow inlets and bays, estuaries, shallow sandbanks, intertidal mud flats, uh, sea caves as well. And the species are the two seal species for which we can have special areas of conservation and then harbor porpoise and the bottlenose dolphin. So only four truly marine species that we can currently um, designate marine protected areas for. Um, so as I said, most of the habitats listed under the Habitats Directive are really quite inshore shallow habitats. When it comes to the offshore, all we can currently protect are reefs. But there's a whole range of sedimentary habitats in the offshore regions of Ireland that we currently can't protect. Um, and a lot of those, like our shelf sediments, actually store a lot of carbon. So it would be really important that the new MPA legislation provides for um, areas like sedimentary areas that store a lot of carbon that we can then protect and say, you know, we really shouldn't disturb the sediment because it's doing us a huge, huge service by locking that carbon in the ground. Then we currently have no way of legally protecting sharks. Um, and that's a huge disadvantage because sharks are apex predators um, and they are hugely on the decline in Ireland right now. We know the angel shark has declined by over 95%. And even um, in the current strongholds like Tralee Bay, which is a special areas of, uh, area of conservation, it's even on the decline there. It's become rare, very, very rare. So clearly we currently have just no way of managing an area for the sole protection of, of, of that shark species. So hugely worrying um, that we're seeing these declines. Another um, kind of criticism of the current MPA network is that it was designated without any stakeholder participation. So these SACs and SPAs that we have right now have very low local buy-in and some people don't even know that they exist. Um, so the report makes a really big deal of this importance of including local marine users from the outset in the planning and designation and management of their local marine area. And there are countless studies that, that show that really you have to include local marine users. When, when it comes to inshore areas especially, you have to, um, you have to ensure that there's participation and buy-in. Otherwise, your marine protected area will not be su successful, and that's what we're seeing now. So the report uses words like stewardship a lot. Um, and really this whole section on stakeholder participation is especially important. Uh, as I said, in the inshore areas, when so many users collide and you really want to foster a sense of stewardship or ownership over the local area. So the report says it can be helpful to talk about the ocean as a blue commons. I thought that was a really nice concept really. So this is where the marine resource would be seen as a common good to be protected, restored and managed equitably as a shared commons. And then lastly, I wanted to highlight um, the report mentions some different types of marine protected areas that we might see in the future. And I think, uh, again, it's a nice recommendation to have, have the protected area named for what it is 
for, for what the purpose is. And one of them is a research and restoration MPA. And I think um, especially for the, the East Coast, and we know that there used to be millions and millions of oysters all along the East Coast. And we could designate these research and restoration MPAs specifically for the restoration of oysters. And we could then research how this actually affects the coastline. And we're going to hear later on from Seal Rescue Ireland about coastal erosion. So these kind of MPAs would be hugely important for all of Ireland, really. We need to restore many other habitats too and species. But I think especially for the East Coast, this is a really nice idea. Um, two other um, marine protected area types that were recommended were, for example, the biocultural MPA, which I think is a really nice idea to preserve cultural uh, heritage, which is so intrinsically linked to um, biodiversity. And then a nature conservation MPA as well. So then the final point for me to make is really that the clock is ticking. So as I said at the start, um, the target is to designate at least 30% of Irish waters by 2030. If we want these areas to be in any way meaningful, then um, you know this could be a quite a lengthy process. We'll need new legislation, which will take a couple of years. We'll need stakeholder participation, of course, especially in the inshore regions. And that's you know building the trust in local communities and really getting stakeholders involved can take uh, some time as well. And then if we want to designate anything beyond 12 nautical miles from our coast, we'll have to go through an EU negotiations process um, under Article 11 of the Common Fisheries Policy. And again, uh, this can take up to a decade if you have particularly stubborn countries involved. So one of the messages that we're we're going to highlight in our public consultation submission and that we're, we urge everybody else also to mention is that while this report is great and the recommendations in it are great, we really don't have any time to lose. If we really implement all the recommendations in this report, this will be extremely, a extremely lengthy process. So we need people to highlight that we, we really are short on time and that there's a lot that we can do in the, in the meantime. Um, so we have the Habitats Directive. It's a strong piece of legislation and we can make sure at least that our current marine protected areas are actually protected. So just to, to make that final point to people to really highlight that urgency. Um, so you find um, a very easy step-by-step -step process how you can participate in the public consultation. Um, if you don't feel like reading the full report and, and writing your own submission, you can go on our website. Um, and really just follow the steps. This is a, an old um, screenshot. So actually we don't have 58 days, we have a few less. So yeah, I encourage you to visit that website page uh, and the link is in the, in the chat. Okay, back to you, Porik. <laughs>